Welcome to Open Studio Hour. My name is Emmy Klein and uh, welcome to Jerry's uh, studio. This is uh, essentially an hour where I'm going to be doing my everyday job and creating art and you guys are more than welcome to just jump in and say hello, ask me questions. I have the chat that I'm getting ready to pull up right over here uh, and you don't have to ask me any questions that are specifically pertaining to what I'm working on. You can ask me anything. So. Uh, feel free to jump in and say hi, but let me get the chat a going. Here we go. Live chat. I think, I think it's up. Maybe. Hopefully, if I don't get the chat up, because it seems to be having an issue loading. <laughs> but if I don't, I have the amazing Amanda over here just in case. Uh, who will throw all of the questions at me. Here we go. Okay, I think it's up. Awesome. All right, so what, just to kind of explain to you guys what I'm doing right now, I am gonna be doing a painting on a new round canvas that we have. Um, and I have to pick my colors. So I'm trying to decide. I have all my old swatches from all of the different shows that I've done um, and I, I'm really leaning towards a couple colors. Now, to explain to you guys what I'm doing, um, I do have to show you my, my iPad here. Maybe if I tilt it this way. There we go. So this is my reference photo with a circle on it because I just wanted to have kind of a divider for my circle and kind of work out my composition this way. But this is my reference photo. Amanda can actually pop the link to this into the chats for you guys. Uh, and then, I'm trying to figure out what colors I'm gonna use. I'm also trying to figure out uh, where I want to have this. Like if I wanna have it be more sky, or if I wanna have more ocean, or if I wanna divide the canvas right in half, kind of thing, which I think would technically be right there. You like half and half? <sighs> it's really pretty. The other thing, other thing, I can make it smaller and like pop the like sunrise off to the, the side to where it's not dead center, you know? And then if I zoom in, I'm just getting a couple waves, so a ton. This is my problem. This is where I'm like trying to figure it out. Okay. Let me actually zoom my thing back out. Okay. So are we feeling this, guys? Because I really like these clouds over here. Yeah. It's almost nice too when you have a little more ocean. But it's your art. <laughs> well, the issue being is that I like these clouds. And I like the sunrise being not dead center because it gives it a little bit more of like um interesting kind of a thing. But this cloud right here is throwing me off. This this cloud. Okay, so if I pull it down, it almost perfectly goes along the edge. Now, I, I have uh, the ability to change that if I want to, and I can change the shape of it or even make it go off. And I think that's actually what I'm gonna do. I like this. I think this is a winner. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll make that permanent, and then I will zoom in and just set it up over here. But now I have to pick the colors for this painting. What did I just do? Alright. Make sure it's nice and straight. Alright, so I'm thinking because this was a variety of oil paints where I have every black paint gray and blue black. And I really think I'm leaning towards this blue black because it gives it a little bit of that blue but like if I tone the whole thing with that dark value, I can kind of swipe it back out, and I think that'll be really, really beautiful. Other than that, I'm leaning towards Payne's Gray. What do you guys think? Because if I do Payne's Gray, I can pop in some fun blues, right? I mean, I can also do that with blue-black, but then this would have more of a fighting 
kind of, it would fight more with the blues yeah. as opposed to like, this is more neutral. I know, it's, this is, this is where I struggle when I'm like, mm, which palette am I going with today? What do you guys think? What do you, what do you think? Let me, let me check the chats here. Oh, we got a couple of our, our usual watchers. Hello, everybody. Change that one cloud to your liking, that is correct. We are just going to pretend like that's a happy little cloud somewhere else. All right, so, oh, the other thing that I, over here, uh, these are technically the acrylics because I don't know where I put my oil version, but the colors in this 12 shades of gray is, should be the same as the oil paints. So I'm just kind of looking at the colors here because there's a couple of them that I really like, like, I think these blue shades would be really nice as well as that Payne's gray but if I do this do I even need that? What is that anyway? Okay but you know we love a blue black moment too. I know. That's why I'm like I need help. <laughs> which colors? Which color is this? This is the cold gray which is probably why I like it so much. All right, eating any money I pick you. Did I land right in the middle? Yes. I did. <laughs> See, this is the problem. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go with Payne's Gray. I'm gonna go with Payne's Gray because that's what my gut's telling me. I can always pop in some fun blues. And I have a ton of blues over here. So, let's do that. Oh, I also have Indigo. No, we're just gonna go with Payne's Gray. That's making it too complicated. I'll be here all day otherwise. Okay. So I'm going to, even though the top of my painting is super bright, I'm going to tone the whole thing down. Let me pop, uh, let me pop this over here. How about that? That'll work. I'm going to tone the whole thing with my Payne's Gray. Woo! Dropping oil paint onto my finger. It's fine. Get that off there. use to keep the colors I have in the piece up here separate. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a larger brush. I got my Chelsea Classical Studio Spike Oil. It's written on the cap here, in case you guys were wondering. And this is what I'm going to use as my non-carcinogenic solvent to break down my oil paints, because I want a nice wash. Is that not going down? There we go. All right, I'm what gonna make a mess on this table. Uh, Chelsea Classical Studio Spike Oil, and then I also have the Chelsea Classical Studio uh, brush cleaner over here as well for when I actually need to like full on clean my brushes. All right, anybody else getting like moon vibes now? immediate moon. When you said you were using a circle canvas today, I was like, why don't you just paint the moon? That's a good idea. I would. Here's, here's the problem with painting the moon. I have a friend of mine. That friend of mine uh, graduated from the same school that I did, and she did quite a few of moon paintings, and I don't think I can come anywhere near the level of beauty that this girl did. They are so pretty, but like she, she is intense. She got it uh, very accurately depicted with shadows and craters and all that jazz. And it's beautiful. And so uh, I have a, can you tell this is again my dog's hair or what? But it's deciding to just be there. Okay. Like nothing against your friend, but have you seen the work that you do? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll have to show you guys the painting. It's really pretty. But yeah, it's like legitimately accurate. And it's. I don't know if I have the gusto for something like that. Like, sh mm. I don't know how you just sit there and paint the moon accurately. 
Like, I feel like I would go cross-eyed. Is that just me? <laughs> All right, let's see. A show about your reference studies and how to make for various medias. Now, when you're talking about reference studies, are you talking about like color swatches or like I know this past um, show I had my sketches for the uh, the chickens that I drew. Uh, I don't know if that's what you're talking about or just let me know. That was by the sea. How accurate. I'm gonna put that up here. Grab me some brush cleaner. Clean off my brush. All right, now. This brush cleaner is also non carcinogenic, in case anybody's wondering. I believe this is actually the citrus one so it's not lavender because I, I just got a whiff of oranges <laughs> and I was like that's not <laughs> lavender <laughs> ah the swatches okay that's what you meant um that would be an interesting show a swatch show how to swatch for all your media I might have to do that I love it fuss and fuss until you lost run see brazen spirituality you know I would do the same thing. Here's the thing though. I mean, Where's my I'm not gonna hold it here? up to the moon. Why not? I'm just not. If it's, it doesn't have to be our moon, it can just be a moon and I'll be fine. It's true. Okay, I think you can do it. Okay, fine. Maybe. All right, so I'm going to take my easy wiper and I'm going to wipe out my composition, so. I'm going to have to have this kind of near it. And I'm probably going to do it like this is my horizon line. So it's going to be slightly sideways for you guys, but I'm facing this direction now because I got my, my reference right above it. So somewhere around here ish. Does that look even? This is kind of the great thing about, like, you know when you, you step back from your artwork? I can actually just look at the monitor. <laughs> it just looks like you're about to do the Death Star. <laughs> it does. Like, hold on. Which I love, personally. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay. I wonder if I have any pigments or anything on here. I don't think I do. I think this is pretty clean. Okay. So. This will be my sky. I knew I was going to get the actual thing dirty, my tablecloth. Alright, let me see. A night beach, so maybe this will help. Okay! Maybe, actually, yeah, this would be a really easy way of doing a, a night beachy scene. Now, I know there's a bit of a wave that kind of comes up right there. So I'm going to kind of... Make it a little less even. Something like that. Little little wavy action. Okay. Here. And kind of maybe put it a little bit more straight for you guys to enjoy this too. Um, and then I'm gonna get this Payne's gray all over my hands, guys. Now, while I do this, I cannot look at the question, so if there's anything that pop pops up, Amanda, please let me know. We already get an oceany vibes, I feel like maybe. You could do a Poke... Uh, Christina, no, I'm going to hold you to that one. You need to do a Pokeball. Everyone's going to see our nerdy. That would be really fun, though. I totally support this endeavor. Is it 
round canvases are just so versatile. I love these things. I cannot wait. These are, this is a new round canvas, so you guys better keep an eye out for this coming up. But. You could also do like a series of the moon phases with them. That you could, ooh. Hello, trendy artwork. That is so trendy right it is now. Very it is. <laughs> but I feel like that'd be a fun series. It would be. And it would be very satisfying as far as when you hang them. Like, they would go mm -hmm. really well together. They'd look really pretty. All right, question for you guys out there. What else would you paint on a circle canvas? Mm -hmm. Tell me. Pokeball. <laughs> I love it. You can move your reference up to the left more. Okay. Okay, let me actually put it here. Why not? I have space. There's nothing on my palette. Um, maybe not. Sorry. Hold on. If I move this down. Listen, my iPad already gets a ton of paint all over it. And maybe I can even do this for you guys. There you go. You're going to get some glare from the lights. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying. There's always, there's always a light. No, I was going to say, if I prop it, it's just just slightly right here. So if I propped it, it would go further onto it. So I'm going to leave it there for you guys to see. But just remember, you can absolutely get this photo reference all on your own because uh, it's a royalty-free image. Um, so... Where was I? All the ways. Actually, I'm going to have to kind of prop this up just a little bit here. There we go. So I can see it. Did not think about that. I actually do need to see this. <laughs> also, if you guys are doing this and you are worried about... Um, touching any of the paints or anything uh, wear gloves that's one of those safety things that'll probably be beneficial um, me I'm always getting this oil paint on my hands and I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to be washing my hands immediately when I finish here and I have some Soho wipes down here as well to wipe my hands off but just be a little safer. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, right? my canvas off the table. Ooh, yes. What? You see what Brazen said? The round canvas yeah. seems so suited to seascapes like a it does. window from the sea. Ooh. Should, uh, I do too. That Love makes it. me want to like put hardware on the outside of it. <gasps> Listen, we do have a fun new frame that's also coming mm -hmm. with this. So just stay tuned guys. I'm going to actually end up putting my, my it, I'm going to have to put this here. I'm sorry. I, I'm not gonna be able to hold it while I paint. Um, let me get ooh, this ice blue. I've been itching to put this in here. So, so far I only have Payne's gray on my canvas and now I'm going to touch in some ice blue, which is one of those colors I am obsessed with. <sighs> it is so pretty. Snake oil.
I'm not sure. How how much time have I even taken up now? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Really? Wow, time flies when you're painting, but I swear, I was like, I don't think this is going to take me very long. I was worried that it wasn't going to take me any time at all. paints am I using? I'm using the Lucas 1862. These are the only two colors I have on my palette right now. That's these two petals. That's it. So this ice blue, the one that I'm using right now, is one of their newer colors. I actually ended up having a show on it. Um, all the, the There was like 10 new colors that came out and that was these swatches. These were the, the new colors that came out and I've been obsessed with these two. Although I've been obsessed with a lot of these in their own right, but for different reasons. For this though, mm -hmm. the ice blue is where it's at. Psychic wave, what am I missing over here? <laughs> Ooh, round canvases for beaches and wood board for epoxy resin. Beautiful beach already, thank you. So therapeutic, I love it. All right, let me get back to painting, otherwise I'm never gonna finish this. Let's horizon kind of goes back in space it gets bluer like a really hazy blue and then it goes up to all those really funky like yellowy pinks kind of peachy colors almost and then it goes back up to like almost like a, a lighter like white almost that's what it feels like but I think I'm gonna have to get some purplies down here but before I do that kind of want to mix these two colors together and put in some clouds. Because it's, oh, no, I need, definitely need more of this pain gray. Pain's gray. Although it might actually be too dark now that I think about it, because I'm going to end up lighten, lightening that value around it. So let me actually go back to where it was. And I am just dabbing this on. Cloud shapes are funny. I'm going to be a painting around it anyway. So. Grayson Spirituality, did you just say chicken? Is that a chicken? That's a chicken. She said, when are we going to see Amanda on a live? And I said, never. <laughs> she said chicken. Listen, I will eventually convince her. It's going to involve watercolors or swatching or calligraphy. And not seeing me, but seeing my hands. <laughs> Maybe. Alright. So this one, I like that it's like up here, but I just want it to like trail off. That feels more satisfying to me. I'm going to curate my clouds. We're allowed to do that. We're artists, right? Mm. Where 
here the clouds are down at the horizon. They're definitely going to kind of get lighter as well because they're going to almost disappear into that the kind of blue area of the sky. Okay, let's get the rest of this guy in. Clean off my brush, get that color off. Now we need to get some other colors on here. So I have Indian Yellow and Lucas Red. Now the reason why I chose Lucas Red is because I'm insane and I swatched all of the pinks looking for the perfect pink. Of course, I mean, who naturally. Uh, none of these are it, by the way. It's this one. I pulled it off to the side. Uh, now the reason why is because I like this tint, this color right here. So it's it's a really bright red, but it does kind of lean a little bit more towards like the orangey colors, whereas like say this color leans more towards like the blues. So I wanted that more orangey, peachy color when I mix it in, which is perfect for a beautiful sky. Now that yellow is gonna be kind of right over here, that Indian yellow. Uh, because it's definitely got more of an orangey kind of tinge to it, but if I were to um, kind of, I, I, I wouldn't say water it down, but if I mix it in with a solvent, it'll kind of water it down and give it more towards like a yellowy kind of color. sunset pictures when you live in Southern California I bet has some amazing uh, sunsets but since you didn't take any pictures while you were there that means you just need to go back right road trip listen anytime my sister and I are at the beach mm -hmm. we are going sunrise and we are going sunset we are finding the places for it yes I put my titanium white I put a lot of titanium white over here uh, Definitely need some titanium. That blue is red. I need a tinge. Gonna need a lot more titanium than that. I also probably should be mixing with a palette knife. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What's the orangey color again? That is Indian yellow. I'm gonna put that blob of yellow, or the blob of titanium white up there to where I can get like, this will be my darkest kind of pink tones and then I'll kind of work my way up to the lighter ones. So I have kind of an ombre that I can pull from. All right, so it's gonna be more or less right here. Any of those clouds that I put in, I'm probably going to have to cover up. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cover these smaller ones up so I can get a nice blend. And some more spike oil. Okay. So that's about where that sunrise is and you know what I'm gonna actually I'm definitely going to cover that up because I need that gradient to be perfect all the way down this is, this is where I realized I worked a little too far on one thing and have to go back okay Here we go. Get some 
lighter pink tones up here. You see where I definitely had that um, the Payne's Gray mix with the ice blue. I thought that that was too light, but once I put those lighter values next to it, they look much darker, which is exactly what I realized I was going to have happen. So I'm glad I pushed it back lighter. Which is, the great thing about oils is that you can always adjust those things after the fact and kind of adjust your values. Again, if you guys do have any questions for me about, you know, not even just oil painting, just let me know. <laughs> the what? I can't spell. Medicine. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Do sing it. Oh, stream. <laughs> oh. Listen, we are human. We typo all the time. Like me having to delete that. Instagram story yesterday because I misspelled the word new. Listen, y'all have not seen it. It is the funniest thing when Amanda, Amanda panic deletes a post and she's like, I misspelled it. I miss it. It's, it's adorable. I did have to run to the iPad. <laughs> well, it didn't. We all understand we're, we're peoples, but I would probably do the same thing. So I can't even say anything. About but there it's not, I'm not peoples. I'm a brand. <laughs> That's true. And I'm very harsh on other brands with misspellings, so. You deleted it very, very quickly, so. Over here, I'm gonna use a little less titanium white like on the edges here. It's already so dreamy, I know. What's great is that I'm gonna use these colors in the waves as well and just kind of pop those um, down around kind of where they need to go. I can't wait for you to paint the picture I sent you from the beach last year. Oh, that's right. No, no rush, but. Listen, if you guys are artists, do you have friends like mine that just send you, you all said, the photos? Send me the picture, I did, I did actually Don't tell you. It's so pretty. I'll not go. But I am curious, does anybody else have friends that are like, hey, here's this picture I took while on vacation. It's really pretty, you should paint it. And then give me the painting. Is it just me? <laughs> it wasn't you that time either. You saw it on my story. I did. I, I, I requested that one. That's valid. I will allow that. I can't help it if I'm great at taking pictures. You are great at taking pictures, so. We're all friends here. Oh, it's looking beautiful. Thank you. Let me pop in some more of these oranges. One, two. Continue that up around this little cloud. Because I'm also going to have to put in those clouds back in a little bit here and there. That I've removed. between orange and pink. And I think that's when I started loving in between colors. Yes. Like my blur bolts and yeah. all of that. Yeah, no, I definitely love the in between colors. My favorite is the carmine and phthalo blue. Oh yeah. 
that I don't know if you guys watching have ever mixed carmine and phthalo blue any kind of like a blue uh, toned red like this Lucas red would not do it uh, but a red that leans more towards blue like this one right here and the phthalo uh, is it phthalo green or phthalo blue phthalo green or wait, no phthalo green that was it like a viridian if you mix those two because they both have like that blue kind of tinge to it it makes a really pretty purple which is bizarre would not think of it all right, so I'm gonna have, I actually have too much paint on my brush. Ugh. All the purple and green together, I've never thought. Mm -hmm. Makes a lovely color. Actually, we were talking about this. Um, you guys might be the perfect people to ask. Would you be interested in us posting pictures of unlikely color mixes? So we were talking about doing that and I thought it'd be really fun. I was just writing that down, that idea again. I've had someone ask me to paint something exactly never. Just wait until, wait until it happens. You'll be like, oh, that's it. That's, that's what she was talking about. Because <laughs> once it starts, it never stops. Do you know how many times my family has been like, hey, Emmy. Literally just talking about that earlier. I painted one of our friends, uh, bought like a townhome. So mm -hmm. I painted it for him. Gave it to him as like a housewarming present. Yeah. And another of our friends was like, will you do mine? And I was like, you live in an apartment. What am I going to do? Paint a door? I said, when you get front a house, porch. let me know. Paint his front porch. That would be funny. So when I get a an actual home... I don't know. Oh, look I was at your face immediately. The whole time, but I would give it my best shot for you. Oh, I would love it. It's like I'm also the person that, like I do not hang my own artwork in my house. Do you know how much artwork I have, just lying around? Like one or two pieces, right? <laughs> so I really need to update my website. <laughs> Just takes so long. <laughs> yes. I'll add it to my list about two years. Yes, Amy. Oh, yes. The worst is, I feel like it's the worst whenever you get someone who's like, I really love this paint, this picture that I took, can you paint it? And you say yes, because you're like, it is a beautiful photo. And then you're just like, you lose all motivation. Is it just me? I'm making a wedding blanket, or a blanket for my friend's wedding, crocheting one, and I have a month to do it, and I have nearly lost all motivation. Yeah. I will say, those are the times where and if anybody has any like really good tips for getting out of those just those funks when you're just like I don't wanna and yeah those are the times where I just lock myself in my studio or a, my room where I get creative kind of a thing and refuse to let myself go get distracted um, until it's at least a good portion of the way done I don't have to be finished, like fully finished, but I have to be at least accomplishing something. Because um, it's you, so hard. You see by the sea asked if you would paint the edges and attach a picture hanger or if you would frame? Um, this, uh, it depends on, I guess if I'm doing it for a friend of mine or if I were to just be, like right now I'm painting this because this is a brand new canvas. And we need to have something to go send over to photography uh, for them to do, you know, the pictures and stuff for what you guys see online. Also for the ambience oval and round frames. That's right. Also for the frames. But, and that's why I'm not too worried about the edges because I know this is going in a frame. Um, but if I were to be doing this for, say, a friend of mine who I know is never going to spend the money on a frame, Either I will frame it for them, 
or I will paint the edges to where they don't have to. Um, it's, it's kind of a toss up and that's why I do love um, using nicer canvases because the edges of those, um, the canvas is nicely folded and you're not gonna have any bad edges to where if you do decide to paint them it's not going to be like a weird little bubble anywhere or anything like that that you have to worry about. But these are up and coming, so one day you will be able to disclose how to get them. One day soon, really. Oops, that was a little too much red. I realize I have some lovely pinks over here, but not over here, and I want more. Because once I get this exactly how I like it, I can pop in those um, little clouds again, and then fix what I got going on here, and then I can pop these colors down into the the waves. How much time do we have? It was 20 minutes left. Yeah. Should be able to, I think I should be able to finish this. It's already looking so pretty. Thank you. Also, do, am I the only one who struggles with what to paint? The reason why I'm painting this is because of Christina. She was like, hey, this one? Yeah? Can you paint this? <laughs> That's why I'll buy it. <laughs> You're adorable. I love it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna actually make a little bit of the ice blue and white into this color and pop it down into these clouds. Might need a little bit darker. <clears throat> Lovely feathering, thank you. Oh my goodness. One magical summer. Oh, too funny. All right, again, if anybody's ever wondering how I get cloud shapes, I'm just dabbing. That is about it. I want some of these fun pinky kind of purples. So that Lucas red mixed with the white and this ice blue. Might even have some Payne's gray in there. <laughs> so feather some of these out. See, if I get closer down here, because that's about the same color as I have down here in the sky, I have to darken those values of the clouds, otherwise it's just going to look odd. But up here it works, so I'm gonna have to darken that. I hope that makes sense. weirdest thing because it appears to be like a solid shape but then it's not they stress me out <laughs> <laughs> only it's christina can be like clouds stress me out but i just want to do like the typical cartoony cloud like, listen if something. you draw cartoony clouds you can draw cartoony clouds that still works they just need to match the overall aesthetic okay. I saw somewhere you can lift out clouds with paper towel if you're doing watercolor, and that yeah. changed my whole life. Interesting. All right, so let me darken this value. Probably gonna actually just use this. I still have some of that. Okay, I need to darken that up just a little bit. Oh, 
because the darks down here need to also be a little bit more reflected in the clouds. So I do want more of that Payne's gray as well. Going for some stormy clouds. But again, I can look at my <laughs> my monitor up here and really get a sense of what it looks like from far away. Because it's so hard to do that when it's laying on a table. Because like, I can't actually see it straight on, but I can on the monitor. I can see what you guys see. So helpful. Okay, so... I told you this before, but I was painting a set one time, and I had to, it was for like mountains, like snowy mountains. I was using like an ice blue kind of color and like a gray, and I was so close to it, I was so sure it was gonna look dumb. And then I walked away, and like 20 feet away, I was like, mountains! <laughs> Honestly, I cannot tell you how many times I've done that, where I will be in this, I don't think it shows on my face, when I'm doing these shows. <laughs> you guys do not understand the level of like, oh no, what if this looks nothing like what I'm supposed to be painting. And there will be, because I'm going through the ugly stages live on, on the internet for you guys. And you guys get to see all of the terrible stages of my art. But like, I have to just t trust the process. So <laughs> there will be moments where in my head, I am full panicking going, this looks awful. But you, I cannot show it because then, you know, I don't want you guys to be like, oh, this girl has no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> like, I do, I swear. Just gotta, just gotta get through the ugly stages. I gotta, I gotta have Katie's, you know, voice in my head going, get, paint through the ugly, paint through the ugly. Just keep painting. It'll look great eventually. Just trust the process. I mean, we've talked about before, but the first time when you were a guest on the show and you were painting, I was like, mm. And then you painted in the details of the cloth you were doing, and I was like, she's a genius. I sorely underestimated how much time an hour is mm -hmm. on that one. But at the same time, like, that was, it was still really fun. But I'm so glad it came across, because, uh, yeah, I was panicking. <laughs> I didn't even know you were anything at that point. I was like, hmm. And then you painted, I still remember it was like a blue robe and you painted it in the right. shadows. And I was like, it's, it's cloth now. All it takes is a couple of brush strokes and then you have clouds. Ah. It's crazy, huh? I'm living for you because I want to paint this so bad, but I don't think I can. You can, Christina. Okay, I think I'm going to move on to the waves. Because I really need to get to these. Now this I don't foresee me being, actually I need a smaller brush for this one. I do need to pop in some more fun blues as well. Do I pop in more fun blues or do I stick with the same color palette? Because if I have some crazy blues going in through my waves, they should also be up here because you want to continue that for consistency purposes. But if I do that, that is the question of which blue do I use and will it look correct? Maybe I go with a blue black like I was thinking. I love the blue black. Or indigo. I like that the blue black is a little greener. And then it go a little pressure me. Here. But follow your heart. Because I'm trying to make sure this is visible. You what? Did you say follow your heart? <laughs> I 
<laughs> that did not absorb into my head until after. I uh, took a moment to actually fully soak it in. Really? Oh, okay. Well, let's see. There's that indigo. God, that's lovely. And then blue black. Oh, yeah, blue black wins. Instant. Because it has that, you're right, it does have that kind of green tone to it that I wanted. This spike oil, just to loosen it up. This is the part where I do not have to be precise at all. I get to scribble, and it all kind of looks correct. You guys know that's what waves are? Just little scribbles. Wee. Alright, let me get How long will it take for this to dry? Um Oil paint, because this is a pretty traditional oil paint, um, most oil paints are going to take, depending on how thick you lay them down, like I'm painting in pretty thin layers, um, so this would probably start being, like a skin will form on it about after a week, uh, maybe two if I start getting a little heavier, um, but that being said, not every paint does that because if it has a different drying oil like a poppy oil or walnut oil those take longer to dry so it honestly is going to depend um, but I know Lucas and Lucas is going to be probably about skin it's gonna get that form that skin formed onto it in about a week um, if I paint extremely thin then it'll be less than that which is really nice um, but it will not be fully dry, just be aware, until, um, again, thin layers, anywhere between six months to a year, and if you paint thick, it can be up to two years. It always depends, and it depends on the humidity of your studio, or the area where you're painting it's it there's so many variables now as far as the drying agent that you can add in there's a lot of different things that you can do there's if you like to paint thick there's an impasto medium in several different brands lucas actually makes one called painting butter which is pretty cool and that will speed up the dry time of your oils as well as give it that like body to it so it'll kind of appear thicker without taking a longer time to dry and you also don't waste your paints as much which is really cool uh but so i don't want to like feather this in for the wave um there is also something called a cobalt dryer which is again a drying agent that you can use uh now cobalt dryers you have to be kind of careful with uh those if you add too much they can become extremely brittle and they can crack so whatever medium you add in there's a lot of like painting mediums and things like that that you can add that you can use that will dry your your uh, oil paints faster there's so many different types um, but just whatever you do follow the instructions on whatever it is that you get because every single one is slightly different but there's a lot of options out there. Get some more spike oil. Also, because I am also trying to finish this sort of more or less before we go, um, have I missed any questions? Because I'm not actually looking at that anymore. <laughs> oh, um, you got the how long to 
dry. Yeah. Raisin was saying, does that mean an artist can continue to paint an oil a week later without any additives? Um, you can. Uh, you can honestly paint a day later, a week later, a month later. You can paint on top of oil oil paintings at any point in time. Um, whether or not it's dry or it kind of has that kind of skin on it is you're gonna have to kind of test that out again it always depends on your studio and kind of what you got going on uh, in there but uh, yeah absolutely you should be able to more or less keep going um, now I will say uh, you do have to follow the fat over lean rule which is really important as well so because I'm working in really thin layers and these are my first layers they're all very, very thin, so they're very lean. Meaning I'm using the spike oil to reduce the fatty content in them, which uh, is why it's so, so thin. Now, if I need to add in fatty content and I still wanna get a nice thin layer, that's where I start using my mediums um, and kind of using it that way. But the more layers you put on top, the more fat you wanna add to it. I always describe it, <laughs> I love describing it like this. You have to remember it like my abs. The fat over lean rule is your fat goes on top of your lean abs. Everyone has nice lean abs. It's just, I have a nice layer of fat on top of mine because this is where I hold my cheese and my bread and all my snacks. Do you know if the painting butter works with water soluble oils? Ooh. So you can use normal mediums with water soluble oils. The issue being is that the more mediums and things that you add in, uh, the less water solubility you have. So you're, you're going to remove that water solubility because you're adding in a normal like medium. I, I hope that makes sense. Probably using a brush that's a little too small right now. I'm also losing my place because I'm like, which wave am I on? I think this is about where I was. Got about two minutes left. Listen, two minutes left on the show. I will be here until this is finished. So. If you guys do have any more questions though, feel free to pop them in the chats before we officially sign off. Um, of course, if you guys also are watching this later on and we're not live anymore, you can always get in touch with me. I do have my uh, Facebook page, which is Emmy, host of Jerry's Live. And then of course we are also on Jerry's Live every Tuesday at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. And you guys can catch me in my shows that way. But um, you can always get in touch with me directly as well on my Facebook page, which is Emmy Host of Jerry's Live, like I said. Uh, if you search for that, and you'll see my face. And then you can just send me a private message. And then if you have any questions about like a specific art project that you've got going on or you having some trouble, whatever it may be, I am happy to help. Now, in case you guys are wondering, once I get this layer of like the waves kind of going where I have like everything kind of defined on where they go, I'm gonna be popping in these pinks and some of these yellows just kind of on some of these, you know, middle waves just to kind of pull that color down. I also, <clears throat> excuse me, need to pull that uh, blue black up into the cloud so it has that consistency because right now this is really blue and this is missing it. But I also have, this is very pink and yellow and it's missing it down here. So I know you probably won't be able to see that part, but uh, <coughs> just so you know. Wait, is it time to wrap it up? All right, well guys, thank you so much. That was open studio hour. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to continue to uh, finish this painting. Let me actually hold it up for you guys to see. Look at that. So Amanda's angry It's so right beautiful. Now. I know, I love it. <laughs> you, even like looking at it through my computer and like talking with people when you just held it up, it's just a different level. It's, it's, it's a fun painting, and I hope whenever these uh, round and we, I believe we're having oval canvases as well come in, whenever we get these in, uh, whatever round things that you guys wanted to paint, it's going to be time. And we're also going to have frames that come with them, or not come with them, but they'll kind of go together to where they will match up, and you'll have oval frames and circle frames that will be beautiful with these. So... I hope you guys enjoy the show, and I will see you guys uh, if you want to join us uh, next Tuesday for a Zoom show. We are going to be on Facebook only, and then uh, the one after that will be Facebook or YouTube every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time is Jerry's Live, and then this is every... <coughs> I'm first. sorry, not every other Thursday. It's the first and third Thursdays. I'm the first Thursday. Jamie's on the third Thursday, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.